fantastic environment. I mean, there's nothing better than the Nürburgring. Nordschleife is not a typical racetrack. It is something different. I'm always inspired to driving on the Nordschleife, and the race here is just fantastic. It's super exciting because I mean it's a 500 kilometer race. Probably the most difficult track in the world. The fast corners in old cars is quite challenging. If ever you make a mistake, it definitely could be your last mistake. The weather is a big question mark here. It could rain down in Adenau and it doesn't rain up here. The Nordschleife is unpredictable. In motor racing there's luck and the luck can go both ways. It's a 1965 Pizzarini 5300 GT, Italian design body with a Chevy small block V8 engine. We met each other, what, four or five years ago and got on pretty well. Luckily, we're quite evenly paced. We're generally within a second or so of each other. It works really well. It does, especially because I know not to let the boss get beaten by me. <laughs> The car attracts a lot of attention and it's beautiful and it sounds great and it's a really very, very well put together car, especially for, for endurance racing. Nick's looking after the car and he was actually one of the guys who helped build it when it was first restored and built up into a race car. Just with my father, so he said, do you want to come and give us a hand? And uh, hasn't really stopped since then. <laughs> The build-up to the race is really good. You get in the truck and you leave, drive across Europe, arrive at the circuit, set up. It's really good fun. The first time I drove the car was at Oni Peterson Historic Grand Prix in Andersdorp in Sweden, and I won first time out in it. We raced it two weekends ago at Silverstone. We were doing very well until there was a bit of an issue with exhaust and a bit of a fire that happened with Roger in the car. The silencer runs up through the cylinder, so the silencer sits in there, and the silencer split open and all of the heat had nowhere to go, so it came up through the sill. And you can see on the other side, there's a leather pad there, and that leather pad caught fire on this side. And um, I was in second place. The car started filling up with smoke, and when I came into the pits, it flared up into, into flames, so I had to cut all the leather out. It took quite a long time. I think we lost two laps. Warning, this vehicle is equipped with Inglese Weber induction. In order to avoid any breathing difficulties during high G-force acceleration, female passengers are advised to remove all tight-fitting garments. Ten years ago, uh, or 12 years ago, I was the only E-type here, and now there are, I think, 15 in a marathon, so there are more and more coming up. My car is actually a complete street car. It's a very comfortable car. It's nice to drive on a normal road. But for the Nordschleife, it's perfect. The car has to be part of your body. And you have to know that the car is only being handled by one mechanic. In this case, it's Stefan and his daughter. So I completely trust them. For our cars and in our team, it is difficult to find additional drivers. This is the first year that we have to have two drivers per car. What we're going to do is that, as we're only three drivers, one will drive two cars. Front who will drive both cars, knows the Jagged very well, probably knows the Healy a little bit better, so he will be the second driver to Marcus. The fact that I'm going to drive in two cars is, is uh, not to my liking. It is very difficult because if you concentrate on one car, then you have a rhythm obviously torn between two lovers. But given that Marcus didn't have a co-driver, I said, fine, you know, we're a team and somebody's got to bite the bullet. And hopefully I won't regret it tomorrow.
First of all, I, I think it's because we are brothers. Uh, we know each other for a long time. He was starting racing earlier, but he's more in rally racing. I'm more in short track racing. I think we are pretty even, so this makes it easier. The only thing what you have to tell him is times, where he has to be. Everything <laughs> else is easy with us. Three cars are with Martin Stratton, and one car is with Christian Drabo, who we already met. Both teams are really doing a professional job, you know, and for us as an amateur, it's also a question of security and safety. If you jump into a car you want to be sure that the paths are controlled and you know you go high speed as you have seen in Le Mans 300 kilometers down Wilson Strait you want to be sure that the paths tie together and don't fall off it very much depends on the team I've got a team of guys who are really good they all know what they're doing they're all professional and they're the most important part of the team really when I was a little boy my uncle had old cars so that's where I started I've always known people in historic racing it's enabled me to drive a lot of their cars now it's a good business but it's done it off as just an excuse to go racing. I'm living a lot of people's dreams. I'm very lucky. with your car to gate zero, which is uh, on this side of this building. Then you find there the barrier, which I hope will be opened. <laughs> and then you go directly to the end of the pit lane, which will be red. You will see a green light and uh, the practice session will be started. I don't think anyone paid attention. They told everyone to go to a car park for assembly and everyone lined up in the pit lane. So the organization of the briefing wasn't fantastic, let's just say that. Three laps come in, change, and another three laps, and okay. that way. We'll refuel it straight away. Okay. Um, just need to check the mirrors because they've moved a bit. Okay. Otherwise, it's ready to go. It's quite wet out there. It's a pretty unforgiving place, so I'm a bit anxious, but what can we do? We just have to deal with it. At least it's not foggy like last year. In the last two years it rained. Last year it rained totally because it was cancelled everything because of fucking rain. And the year before it rained too. 
Yeah, there, there is a, I, have, I have more experience in the dry, but also some in the wet. Markus von Eurenhausen, he knows every single stone on the Nordschleife. I'm not so familiar with it like he is. You need to know the track well, especially when it's wet. You just need it to be concentrated, go find a good line, a good rhythm. I know that uh, rain is good for him because then he drives better than the others, but on the other hand, I know how important it is, is that he's on a safe side. I just heard an announcement, it's delayed until 8.30. I'm just going to take it very easily. Yeah, no, you have to. Look, that's, in any case, look, qualifying here means absolutely nothing. No, of course. Is it based on time or yeah. it's based on year of car? It's based on time. Right, so they, okay. they put three groups. Right, it'll be the fastest lap. So whoever puts in the best lap will set the grid position for us. I've been into the barriers on Gran Turismo thousands of times, but uh, oh. I think you've got to drive a bit differently when you're actually in the real thing. Not tomorrow, please. <laughs> Making sure. <laughs> cool. Slippery, slippery. You think you can go, and then you see oops, oops, and, and already lots of cars stranded. nerve-wracking handing over the car. All I could do was give him my advice on where the really scary places were on the track. As you go down the hill, it's nice and dry. As you get down near the bottom, there's a sharp right-hander. Very careful through there. And up the stairs, it's really, really slippery. He's going to do one lap, get his pace, feel where there's grip, feel where there's not, and figure out where he can push and where he can't. All right.
Uh, Nürburgring always in rain, so normally the car is good in the rain. But not with these tires, we are not only allowed to drive good luck tires, on the A ones it would be perfect, but so we'll see. Why is he driving on reserve? He goes on reserve pumps. It came to me last night when we were having dinner. A few years ago, I did one or two laps in the car, so I know it's a good car, but we have to sort of juggle the pit stops a bit. I don't want to be stuck out there when there's a car here, so we'll have to work something out. Martin is much more professional than I am, but we still love driving together and against each other because we know each other so well. It's even more fun if you share one car because he also gives me good feedback about my car. He's doing quite well. He will have a stiff neck and a couple of blues, but otherwise he's doing well. He's coming back tomorrow, um, so it's okay. It was a bit, you know, you, you are a bit under shock, but I think he's doing well. It's horrible, horrible, because I, it, I think it was a minor thing which could have uh, um, been avoided. And but you know these little things, which is uh, which are uh, uh, human faults, uh, which can happen to everybody, which can kill your husband. I mean, I have three kids. One is there, the other ones are running around. I don't want to be alone with them. You know. <laughs> you have to be focused on, on what you are doing the moment. Uh, of course, you deal with it because it's one of your good friends. It's a teammate, etc. But you, you, we, we all we had a lot of telephone chats. Uh, and we know. We knew that he is in a good, he has good medical support, um, so that's the most important. He's okay, his wife is there, so everything is okay. I'm scared of the other people who could risk him, or weather, or uh, uh, sure, sure things. The moment you start worrying about those things, um, then then you're not so focused. So I think it's, it's important to have fun and to be focused. Um, but if something more dangerous, more serious would have happened, then certainly we we would have done something, went straight to see him and so on.
so many places I'm breaking things shit. Good. just sorting out the cars and the grids. We are in the first grid. I am on position 14 I'm on and 12. Alexander is on 12. I did a very good job this morning. And um, I think we have a fantastic grid. I mean, when you, when you see all the cars, it's very, very beautiful, very nice cars. Sun is shining, but I guess we get a little shower in between. So it's going to be a good race, I hope. It's very civilized down this end, isn't it? <laughs> Which one are you in, this one? I mean, that one and one behind you. So how are you doing that? I'm going to do probably 15 laps in that one. This one's with, with um, what's his name? That's right? Marcus. Marcus, Marcus yeah. yeah. And, and who's in this one? George Uber. Okay. Me and Marcus should be and could be competitive, but it's something, whatever he'd done to the handling this morning. He said he took the anti roll bar. Right. It's alarming. Really? But he's put it, he said he's put it back on. I told him. We'll have fun, man. Enjoy. Oh, well. Yeah. Let's hope it stays reasonably dry. Yeah, I know. See you later. I'm slightly nervous. Key thing is to stay out of trouble in the first couple of laps, make sure you keep away from the lunatics who want to race off, and then it comes down to just putting in good consistent lap times and hopefully the car going well, not breaking down, and a good quick change, and we should be fine. Like Follow me. Where's the yellow yeah. car? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're getting quite clean. Yeah. Good luck, mate. See you later. See you later. Okay. Good luck, Martin. 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 Name is Etienne. Yeah. Etienne. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Everyone's ready. Everyone's pretty keen. Yeah. Looks like. We jump in the cars and then we have one introduction lap. Then when we get on the long straight of the pit line of the Grand Prix Circus, the light goes off and then you can overtake from then on. How are you feeling? Nervous, like always. What are you expecting? <laughs> Hopefully it will not rain and we will see what happens.
It was a bit of a frustrating start process because they got us gridded up so early and then we did two laps behind the safety car and two times 20 kilometers sort of crawling pace is just boring, um, especially because you just want to go. Started about 25th, got quickly up into about the top 10 and gradually worked my way out from there. At the back of the circuit, it's just starting to get a bit damp. And as I went over one of the brows, as I landed the jump, the rear wheels locked on the chassis and it sent the car sideways just onto the grass. And then I just couldn't slow the thing down in time for the next corner. And uh, I just ran through the gravel, just touched the wall, but it spent the bottom suspension. So, they, so I had to drive all the way back. Molly's a very good driver, so what's happened today is unfortunate. Just sort of proves how unforgiving the Nurburgring is. It's out, unfortunately, yeah. I'm very disappointing. The only concern is uh, that he sees the pit board and comes in. He's going to get the pit board this lap, so he should be in within the next few minutes. We hope. But if he does miss it, there is time, is there? Just so you can do a 13 minute round, you should be alright. I took the car over in 33rd place. It was totally wet, totally slippery. Yeah, the gearbox right. feels a bit dodgy, you know, it's a bit vague, it's not as... No, otherwise, you know, it's, it's going great, the car feels good.
there. I mean, we're running fourth, so chance for a podium. We didn't do so well in qualifying, nor did Marcus, so the battle started quite early on. I know exactly what lines Martin take, and he knows mine, and we can be door to door and have fantastic fights. for it but he had a tire problem my wheels turned on the tire so the balance of the car changed and I came in after the fourth lap and we had to change tire we lost four or five minutes so I came back up from behind caught up the yellow Corvette and we had a huge battle for several laps during which the 1E type went off and the GT40 spun so suddenly we were battling for the lead and I was following it for quite some time and the visibility was really really bad I knew I was quicker but I thought well if he goes ahead of me he can make the first mistake and then he did make a mistake so I took the lead anyway I try and get both cars on the podium, it's okay. Pass, huh? We can't beat the Porsche, he is too fast for us. Unless he makes a mistake. But we can change the position with the Silver Jaguar and the Green Jaguar. This is the only thing that we can do. Okay, I'll try. Okay. The race is not yet finished. Bloody is it. decided to stop the race.
Once it's run a certain percentage, the race is deemed as run. It would be a huge operation to restart it, and you only have maybe two laps left. How do you go? Great, but I have no clue where I am. <laughs> there's a, there's a big sign over there. Oh, I have to take my glasses off. <laughs> okay. Okay. Not bad. Three or six, I got it. Second, I guess. Do you pass the three or six? Yeah, because it, it comes in there. It's tired. On the one hand, you are really excited and you want him to win. And on the other hand, uh, I think it's really unimportant and there's not going to happen much when, when, uh, when he, he doesn't win. I passed Martin, um, but unfortunately then the red flag came, so it's counted backwards. And uh, the race was then basically stopped. So Martin won and I came in third. I came in for George, who owns the car, to do his last stint. But then, before Marcus was able to come in, the red flag happened. And though we had a problem with the car right at the end, because with the red flag, the result goes back one lap, uh, we came out the winners. So uh, it was our lucky day. I have heard rumors, <laughs> but I don't believe it, that a, that a tree fall on the street at uh, Hohe Acht, which is one of the more complicated um, uh, parts of the, of, the, of the track. But uh, definitely we didn't know anything. Anyway, I was very happy. It was a good call. <laughs> no, I think it was bad. It I was very bad. Yeah. I think we, we lost some positions because we were already in the grid, uh, in, in the pit. I was waiting to jump into the car. We were fueling up and the others went by. So we were, we were falling back uh, car by car. <laughs> yeah, walk, give it a walk. <laughs> you know what happened? What? In the race, the, the weights of the tire, uh, I lost them in the third round or something. So my glasses always fell down because the car was moving like this so much. So I came in and, and we changed the tires, all tires, and that sort of throws a bit back. That's racing. But it's great to be on the podium again. And I think it was a very challenging race, a very tiring race. The bigger the fields are, the faster the cars. If you have a cheaper car, it doesn't matter that much. What are you doing with it? And in the GT races, which is the Nordschleife, there are all sorts of cars in there. Everybody says in the beginning, yeah, we are going for fun. But if you are sitting there in the car, then the competition comes up automatically. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think we don't have a problem that we jump three places or five places or ten places back because of this uh, red flag thing but uh, out there sometimes you are in competition you want to get close to this guy or you don't want that he's passing you of course Roger had an amazing start and handed the car over to me in, I think, fifth place. That's why I went out for my stint. It was still very wet. It took a bit of getting used to, but I managed to get into a good rhythm. I think I did about an hour, and the gearbox broke. The gearbox in the car is beautiful, and it's so direct and solid. I could feel that something wasn't right. The gear lever had quite a lot of movement, and it's not normally like that. And we'd had an issue in the formation area trying to find reverse gear. It was this sort of this nagging thing in my head, so I said to him, look, there's something not quite right. There was a nasty vibration at the back end of the car, and, and I thought, okay, well, I'll probably come into the pits, uh, but I never actually got round. I think I stopped about 5K in. I've got a timer, which I look at, which is on the pit wall, so I know roughly when the car's going to come in. So you have, like, 10 seconds, he may have spun or something like that, and he'll come past maybe 20 seconds late. But you get to a minute, minute and a half, and you know that they've gone off. And then, like yesterday, we had a red flag at the same time, then you sit there and worry, especially somewhere like here with the North Slider. It's not nice. Joe took his telephone with him, so he rang me to say he was on the back of a truck. <laughs> they towed me to a car park, and I went and sat in a bar. We did enough uh, uh, laps to be classified, so finishing 15th was uh, no you know, bad uh, position or no bad result either. It was a, a very, very good result. But it's always nice to get to the end of a race and, you know, given that we were running so high, it, it would be nice to have had a real result. It was great to see how the car performed, what the little issues were, what the just small things that we'd like to have right for, for Spa. You no, know, it was fantastic to be running in fifth and it was great to get in the car and in a position where I felt, you know, I was you know, comfortable and, um, you know, I felt we could have we could have had that finish. Wir kommen zur Preisverleihung des Historic Marathon 500. Roger Wills and Joey Twyman. Gotcha Historic Racing. 
Markus von Oeynhausen und Martin Stretten auf Position 3, Jaguar E-Type. Overall winner of the historic Marathon 500, George Hubert and Martin Stretten, Jaguar E-Type. I'm going to do the Tour of Britannia in, in England for, for four days um, with my wife in the Bitterini, which will be great fun. And um, and then, yeah, then it's Spa, I think. I don't think we've got any other racing in between. So um, one one big event and then and then the six hours. Six hours is always fantastic. And um, I think that's going to be it for the year. Uh, maybe still here, the Nürburgring Classic. Um, let's see. For the M M1 would be Silverstone, but most probably I can't do that, so we will see what happens. I'm going to Italy, which is a very beautiful event, Rally di Lecce. Uh, this is really one of the famous rallies down there. There are beautiful cars, Stratos as many as you want. Uh, and I'm doing this this event with, uh, with an Austin Hilvis 3000, also our car. Uh, and I'm looking really forward to this. I, I tried to go in there three years and now they accepted me and I'm very happy to go to this event. With my family, by the way. They are joining me.